it's just absolutely brutal. Parts of Simon Fell where you can stand, put your hand out in front of you like that and pretty much touch the ground in front of you, it's that steep. The race became known as the toughest. And I said right at the beginning it was the world's toughest cyclone cross. Nobody has disputed that. The Three Peaks Cyclocross is now in its 56th year. At 60 kilometres long and with a course record standing at 2 hours and 52 minutes, it's three times longer than the usual cyclocross race. But it's the terrain that it crosses, the bleak limestone mountains of the Yorkshire Dales, that really mark it out. This is a cross race that bears little resemblance to a cross race. The first time I did it, I said I'd never do it again. And then the second time I did it, I realised why I'd come back. It gets under your skin. And this then will be my third, but I'm going to be joined by Three Peaks Virgin, Oscar Puyol, Spanish road pro cyclist and owner of the most flamboyant moustache seen in Yorkshire in the last 25 years. Firstly though, time to sample a bit of local hospitality. As you can see, pre-race nutrition strategy pretty dialed. Oscar, I've got to ask, how are you feeling about tomorrow, mate? I feel a little bit nervous. I don't know what it's going to happen. You are experienced at riding off-road, right? So, top, you've been fourth in the National Cycle Cross Champs, seventh in the National Mountain Bike Cross Country Champs. Yeah, I, I knew this race since a long time ago, and I know a little bit about, and I hate running and walking. <laughs> Having done this twice before, I can tell you that I hate walking and running, and this is definitely the weakest part of my race. My worry is that Oscar is still exceedingly fit. You've actually got two road races left to do this year, so I can't beat you walking, and I definitely can't beat you on the bike. I don't know what I'm holding on to, but it's a glimmer of hope that maybe a bit of prior knowledge will help. But uh, anyway, maybe I'll get you another beer. Do you want another beer? Race day. I can't pretend I'm not nervous. I can't even shake this habit of a lifetime, which is that I turn up to a bike race and I get nervous, even though now it doesn't really matter how I do. But uh, there is one extra reason, and that is that although it's not actually raining now, it's really damp under tyre, and there's a lot of exposed rock on this course, and an overinflated cyclocross tyre and wet rock. It's not kind of like the ultimate combination. But anyway, I'm trying to think about that because it's exactly the same for everyone out there. I'm just gonna go sign on do my thing, and then I'll be all right. Just about to sign on. There's some important equipment I need to do so. My racing license, this, which is the mandatory survival bag. Uh, also this, which is my mandatory survival whistle, and also a waterproof jacket as well. How many cyclocross races do you need a survival bag? That's what you're gonna ask yourself. Given the severity of the course, you could well be forgiven for wondering why on earth a mountain bike wouldn't actually be a better tool for the job. And uh, well, you'd be right, I think a 29er lightweight mountain bike hardtail probably would be far better for the job. But it's not allowed, quite frankly. Uh, true to the original spirit of the event, cyclocross bikes are the only bikes permitted and they're quite heavily regulated as well. So you can use 35 millimeter wide tires, so slightly fatter than the UCI limit of 33. Your handlebars can be no wider than 46 centimeters. They have to be drop handlebars, so there was a time when people were using flat handlebars. Uh, and you are permitted to use those levers on the tops there, but with hydraulic disc brakes, that isn't really possible to do. So there we go. There's a, going to be more information about my bike for today over on the tech channel, so make sure you check that one out. But in essence, here we go. One by, got 42 chainring up front, 1042 cassette at the back. And yes, last year on the start line, everyone laughed at me because I was riding carbon wheels on possibly the rockiest cyclocross race in the world. But they're back for another year. So let's see how they go. The route starts with a neutralised road section up Ribblesdale before the flag drops and the riders hit dirt for the first time. Up through open farmland until the slopes of Simon Fell. 
its actual name, up onto the summit ridge of Ingleborough, most of which is unridable, before a fast descent to Colcoats and back onto Tarmac. Nine kilometres, in fact, until the next mountain, Wernside. A long succession of completely unridable limestone steps lead onto the summit, the highest point of the race at 728 metres, before a ridgeline single track descent with more limestone and more steps. Another stretch of tarmac then takes us to the final climb and out and back up Penagent. Almost all rideable, but still a gruesome climb, and then a fast descent down to one last section of tarmac. How do you feel today? I feel really nervous, mate. Like, roughly nervous. I, there's so much pressure to, to beat you, uh, it's, I can't get over it. No, I, um, I am nervous, mate. Like, just, it's a race, isn't it? Even yeah. though I've not really got any expectations, still get. But this is the feeling it has to be, you know? Like, yeah. feel this. Yeah. <laughs> is it what you expected? Mm, kind of, you know? I tell you what, mate, what I'm really hoping is that we end up in a similar place. Like, like I'm, I'm not expecting to hold your wheel, but like, and I wouldn't expect you to wait, but it'd be super cool if we get to do a bit of riding together. So I've, my fingers are crossed that I don't see you scampering away at the first climb. Yeah, I hope you really are as slow walking as you say you are. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. my walking threshold about 42 watts I reckon I'm getting back onto the group. It's the only bit I feel like I can do. I'm so glad Ingleborough's out of the way. It's absolutely savage. Possibly the worst thing I've ever done with a bike. But it's all going to get better from here. Former bronze medalist. In the junior mountain bike world's that. How is Oscar doing, Adri? Eh, Todo lo mío este terreno. See the next one. Bottom of mountain number two. Managed to ride quite a bit. I've just jumped off now. Cheers. Steps. I think, with my dodgy eyesight, I can just actually make out Oscar probably a couple of minutes up. So I hope he's getting on all right. Can't wait to hear what he thinks. Say sorry to the head of the riders. Why annoy in the downhill? Because you guys are so technical how fast you downhill with this bike.
as you can see, I'm on my own for this stretch of road. The climb up to the top of Wernside is another brute. It's not quite as bad as the first one, but the descent's good, right, really good fun. But every now and then, I find myself on some treacherous, rocky slab, and then about 10 meters off to my left, some dude will come barreling through a bog, going four times my speed. And I'm like, where have you come from? Uh, I'm pleased to be down it, puncture free. So, just one more climb and descent to go. And this one, I seem to remember, if you've got anything left, it's about 98% rideable. So I'm hoping I can make up a bit of ground. But I'm pretty tired. Got a bit of calf cramp. Nearly ready to turn off now. I've got an hour and a quarter to get back before the magic's in half hours. So, let's keep my fingers crossed. So tough. Oh. So, I've decided that because I'm so bad at walking, I've just got to stay on the bike as much as possible. It's easier said than done, because I can't feel my arms, I can't feel my legs. Ah. Both legs cramping. My hamstrings have gone. Ah, I got a bit of a puncture right at the top. And uh, it was riding down through some grass. I just caught the edge of a rock. But fortunately, it hasn't gone down too much. I stopped to pump it up for a little bit. But to be fair, I wasn't really able to use my pump very well. My arms are in bits. I don't think I've ever suffered quite so much in this race before. It's ridiculous. I've got like 10 meters to catch up to this bloke. And I can't do it. I'm at 300 watts and I'm just maxed out. Ah, oh, come on, Richardson. I hurt so badly. FN beats you Oh my god. Again. <laughs> no, fair, I'm joking. Fair I'm joking. play, Oscar. You absolutely smashed that, mate. Like, I knew you were going to do well, but I didn't 
I just didn't know how you'd like what you'd think when you're kind of going down these ridiculous descents on a ridiculous bike. Twentieth, I got. Oh, what did you get? Eighth, three oh five. Whoa, smoking. <laughs> you know, uh, next year, Oscar, we should do like push-ups before we come here. My my arms, my little arms, it's just like. Oh. And tomorrow. Ah. Tomorrow, man. It'll be so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it from the 56th edition of the Three Peaks Cyclocross race. I am very, very sore and slightly cold now, actually, but I've had an absolutely cracking time, as I have done the two editions before that. Fair play to Oscar, who absolutely nailed that on his first attempt. So, uh, yeah, all credit to him. Uh, if your Spanish is up to scratch, then you can watch the video over on GCN and Espanol to find out a little bit more about exactly how he has found it. But uh, I would encourage anyone who fancies the ultimate cyclocross challenge to get an entry in for next year. It tends to be oversubscribed, but give it a go. One thing I would say though is please don't come up to the Yorkshire Dales and try and ride the route because it's not allowed at any time other than the race because it's on either private land or public footpaths. So please don't do that because you'd put the race in jeopardy in future years. So anyway, we'll finish on a little bit of a warning. But uh, yeah, if you want to see a little bit more information about my bike that I rode today, then you can get through to a video over on the tech channel by clicking there. Otherwise, give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it.